The Lagos State Government, through the Ministry of Education, has organized its Education Summit with the theme, Creating a Sustainable Feed-for-Purpose Education Model. The two-day summit, the first of its kind, had in attendance government officials, private sector stakeholders, and international educationists. The Education Summit provided a platform for all stakeholders to re-evaluate the state of education in Lagos in a bid to activate and mobilize needed engagement to deliver learning for sustainable development. At the first day of the summit, the Commissioner for Education, Mrs. Folashade Adifisayo, and the guest lecturer, Professor Enasi Okwendo, postulate that it is high time the Nigerian education system stepped away from knowledge base and be more practical to ensure the youths and their teachers are more equipped to transition into a more thriving sector. I urge us not to think of education only in terms of the traditional way of looking at education or formal education, but instead let's begin to look at education as a process of training the mind. As we settle into this fourth industrial revolution that is driven by technological advancements, it is obvious, very obvious to me, that this knowledge-based education is no longer adequate. Do we need it? Yes. Should that be all education is about? No. There should be more. In his keynote address, Governor Babaji De Sonwolu, who joined virtually, says his administration is not just taking education as one of the pillars of his administration, but a legacy is intentionally bequeathing through the various investment in infrastructure and technology. Hence, he will continue to prioritize education. Education for us, it's not just a pillar on our team's agenda. Education for us is a must for us. It's one of the major, major um, dividends of democracy. It's one of the cardinal objectives of any government that, that is worth its, its, its work. And so for us, we see education as one of the things, one of the tools that can end poverty in our system. We see education as one of the legacies that we can bequeath you know, to generations coming behind us. Mr. Governor enjoined participants to help propound solutions that will improve access to education, technology, vocational education, capacity development, staff welfare, and special needs. I'm hoping that this, this summit, which has a very apt team, creating a sustainable fit for purpose educational model, will indeed be a platform where we can dissect you know, where we are currently and the things that we can indeed still improve upon. At the panel discussion, moderated by the CEO, Nurture House Consulting Limited, Mrs. Ayokweju, participants reviewed the education sector. Let's always start with the curriculum. Do we have a curriculum that addresses uh, the things that people should learn? Do we have one, for instance, that is dealing with today's challenges, and even for the preschool as well as the primary school. The Ministry of Economic Planning and Budget is collaborating with the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund and GIZ to build what we call a, labor, a Lagos State labor market information system. Um, and the idea for it is to be able to connect um, between what is happening in our institutions of training and what is happening in, in industry. We looked at the sectors of the economy that can be good at creating jobs. And five of them will give you 15 million jobs in five years. And those 15 million jobs, by the way, will lift up about 52 million out of poverty. 
And so when we're talking about lifting people out of poverty, it's about the skill for work. It's about the demand side, talking with the supply side. What should a fit-for-purpose education system look like? It's a holistic approach where all as aspects of the ecosystem work together in partnership, ultimately building interventions that are both reactive and proactive. I'd like to recognise the work that Lagos State has done very much to encourage and promote a model of affordable and accessible education. I think it's important to understand where the gaps are uh, in, in sorting out the problems. I think it's critical. Um, it is not by chance that the, the Finnish ambassador is here. Uh, we all hold up Finland as an example. But the example is not that, um, it, it, it's not like as if it's not, we have, we have not provided for it in our curriculum. The problem is that we don't execute properly. So right now we're all running on 1950s ideologies of what Nigerians need to look like. Well, Nigeria is very different from, from what it looked like in the yeah. 1950s. Yeah. We haven't had another curriculum conference since then. So I think the first step is really we all need to get in a room and basically say, what are we exactly educating our children for before we even start to talk about other interventions? Mm -hmm. Then technology can come in. A breakout session followed the plenary session and topics discussed include fit for purpose education policy framework, public and private education partnerships and collaboration, emerging technologies in education, pre-tertiary education. Other topics discussed include leveraging technology for quality higher education and the future of education, relevant strategies. One fundamental challenge of education is the amount of time we spend sitting in front of the blackboard vis-a-vis -vis the amount of time we spend out there getting the work done. Something as simple as allowing kids, if you go to the US, a high school kid would have done jobs several times before he gets to graduation. The skill you are talking about that you want him to build, some of those skills actually comes from his practical experience out there in the real world. So if we are talking about fit for purpose education policy, we have to be specific. What is this fit for purpose that we are talking about? Two, it has to be relevant. And then we also have to look at applicable to target audience. The future of education, I can say, is anchored on technology, is anchored on innovation. So innovation is important. Passion can never be ruled out. And we know passion is a factor of motivation. Where lies the supervisory team? Are they doing what they are supposed to do at the right time? Are they ensuring that proper records are kept? The environment too is key. The environment under which we learn determines how we assimilate. Industries need to work with schools, so they tell us, what are you looking for? So I think one of our solutions should be that we should be working closely with the industries, not when the children get to university, but from the secondary level. We must have that understanding that we should not be expecting private sector to come into organization without having something that they also want to benefit. So it is high time that we go back to our share some of the research that we have done, that we are keeping in the share, and we are not doing anything about them. It is high time we, you know, start bringing them to the fore and engaging by the sector that we understand that we are having some of this problem and we want to solve this problem. Through conversation and engagement with the Lagos State government officials, currently there is a virtual laboratory that is under construction in Lagos. <laughs> Maybe not. In, in, in four weeks to come now, it's going to be starting in my school because we're using my school as a pilot. The concept is just that you want to teach mathematics, you want to teach physics, you want to teach chemistry, you want to teach biology. Things that will naturally cost you more. With the help of 3D animations, with the help of some technology tools, on the screen, you can display those concepts. You can test for acid, you can test for sulfur, and you see the reaction. In real life, the Lagos State has really, really wowed. I speak for my organization, and I'm a Nigerian. They wowed us because the way they've used technology to develop the children in Lagos State and how their leadership, uh, maybe the, uh, the directors, the PAMSEX, the HC, even the governor himself, how they've all worked together. Because we come to them with technology and we say, this is what's going to happen and immediately they're embracing it. 
and that they deserve kudos. I mean, it's something that we should actually clap for them. At the second day of the summit, stakeholders, including the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat, say the summit will go a long way in solving a lot of the knotty issues in the education sector as the summit seeks to prefer lasting solutions by taking advantage of technology. In Lagos, it's not just about statistics. It's about the practicality of what we are doing. How do we bring children back to school? And then those ones in school, how do we make sure we give them the best? What needs to come out of this conference for me is what are the next steps for us to take? Okay, it's true with renovated libraries, we've turned two colleges of education into universities, University of Science and Technology and University of Education. We've done, we now have 12 comprehensive schools, we have technical schools and vocational schools. So two, three years time, what do we need to do again? We now have 12 comprehensive schools and we have about nine vocational centers and we are going to ramp up more before the end of the year. This will complement our vocational institutions to engage and give them skills they need for the future. You don't have to be a graduate and that's the Finland and the Scandinavian country models. In between, you can get the skills you need to run a system and develop it. And Lagos is already doing that part. Speakers urge government to make intentional investment in research to achieve qualitative education in line with the state's 30 years developmental plan in order for it to compete favorably with other global counterparts. In order to create a sustainable fit for purpose education that culminates in the achievement of the 30 year Lagos development plan, it is impressive that education in teams and gender of Mr. Governor is prioritized. Equal education and high quality teaching at schools are at the core of our education system's success. We consider quality education a constitutional right, not a privilege. I believe that through sharing of best practices, we can learn from each other, build partnerships, and find common solutions to learning. It is clear that every effort that we make to entrench quality education is worthwhile. We have done the easier part of discussing solutions. Now it's time to execute. Education starts at home, continues at school, and is promoted by and used within the wider society. Indeed, I dare say it takes a village to raise a citizen. My fellow villagers, we can only achieve our goals with trust, collaboration, and synergy. At the panel session, topics discussed by participants include Education Co-Creators Roundtable, Education Practitioners Roundtable, Leveraging Technology for Quality Higher Education, and Teacher Education. The teachers who stand in front of the children in our classrooms are the ones who mold their future. So you want to put teachers there who can contribute positively to the molding of the lives of the children. And pedagogy is very key. We need to redefine and restructure to ensure that it's on the front burner. We talk about three C's. Character, competence, uh, particularly collaborative problem solving capabilities, and connection, social, social capital across students and the connectivity to, to community and to each other. And by developing those three things, we can develop uh, positive young shapers who can really power the, what we call the African century. So what we are talking now is how Lagos continue to invest smartly and wisely. And these are the five critical areas I've been listening since yesterday. The first is teacher professional development. The second one, which is also very important, digital literacy and skills, digital skills. We have over 30 clubs, very interesting clubs, uh, environment clubs, um, a lot of interesting clubs, of course, Boy Scouts, uh, Girls Guild, Red Cross. We should use those clubs to foster this sort of behavior, ensuring that each student is at least in one club. Um, there's a lot of value that comes, as Prof has said, um, when you interplay with your peers, especially when it's not in the strict formal learning environment. That's where you do a lot of your learning. Our focus should be on student that demonstrate negative behavior. These are some of the students we refer to as special needs. 
They need special equipment. They need special materials. They need special teachers and special facilities to be able to cope in the school. So if we are creating an education model, it has to support everyone. We cannot want different uh, countries' education model to develop ours. So that's the first question. Who are we developing this education model for? The first point I'd like to make is if we say fit for purpose education, what does it mean? What purpose? So the first critical question to answer is fit for purpose. Which purpose? The two-day education summit provided a platform to learn from best practices and successful education systems in a bid to create a practical roadmap towards the growth of education sector in Lagos State. To the teachers, I think um, it's time for us all to sit together and work with the private sector and find out what kind of students they would like to have. How, what that means, how should we teach these students so that we bring them out to be what society expects. To society, we are doing what we can do. To the children, I say, this is a fantastic learning opportunity. The future is yours. Learn from everything around you and become the great person that you are meant to be. Most important and critical, you know, component of this, you know, model is the ability, is the determination to act. To, 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 to meet your goal. At the end of this program, we must have you know, actionable and implementable decisions. You cannot deliver whatever you plan without the teachers. And for us to sustain whatever we have in mind, the teachers must be carried along. They must be trained and retrained. And they are to deliver on the mandate of the states in respect of education. So the teachers are very, very germane in the scheme of things. We are now taking a step backward to look at how we can refocus, how we can reinvent the wheel, so to say, such that the product of our secondary education, by the time they get to the university and get out of the university, they will be employable and they will remain so. I think the, the, the discussions around our education system in Nigeria is a continuous thing and we have to make it. And Lagos being what Lagos is, you know, must help and lead in that space. When I first had um, the team of this education summit, Fit for Purpose, I was like, Fit for Purpose, what does that mean? Then the moderators came, the panelists, they were talking a lot. Like, I learned a lot from them using technology, bringing technology into education. The project I came here to exhibit is a work safe traffic system. The work safe traffic system. It's taking into consideration of the pedestrian, most especially students who want to cross the road. Abraham Lincoln said, and I quote, the best way to predict your future is to create it, and that is what we did here. This administration has, has made education paramount. It is a um, testament in the fact that they, um, they included it in, their, um, in the pillars of administration, the third pillar of administration. And I, um, I'm just urging the, um, the students to make better use of this opportunity. Let me first commend the Lagos State Government for putting this up. And I think the goal of the Lagos State Government is to use this summit to again rejig the system and rethink critical issues. In terms of um, technical education, fit for purpose for us means a lot of things. It means that we have to go back and look at some of the things that we are doing and think that are we being responsive to the industry requirements? Are we even fulfilling the personal needs in terms of education, in terms of technical um, competency of our students? We are looking at a situation where our education system will address the needs of the industries, the companies. We are the one implementing the educational policies in Lagos State, the district, the suburb, and uh, at the tertiary level. And why do we need this now? There is need for this in order to upgrade 
or what have been done. One of the goals of the national policy on education is for our children, our students, to be self-reliant. So when we are talking about fit for purpose education model, we are talking about that education that is relevant for this 21st century age. Once we are able to pass through our system, whatever area of endeavor that you need to fit in, one will be able to get into it and fit in properly. You will see that we really had... It is a stakeholder engagement where we discuss issues around curriculum, developing courses that are industry-based, developing courses that will provide solutions to the society that we belong. And that is why we are saying that for us here, we want to leverage on technology so that we have a functional, quality, higher education in Lagos State. Fit for purpose is just saying, meeting the demands of the society, our education, our graduates, to be able to meet the needs in the larger society. Yes, we are a regulatory agency, but we also see our role as enablers, that we're able to create an enabling environment where regulation and compliance is the order of the day. They are in a safe environment learning this trade. You can see all the cis um, group of uh, skills that they can acquire in the comprehensive school. By the time they are out learning these um, skills, you discover that they are fit for the society. What we are doing now is going back to the drawing table, looking at various models. We can't copy and paste. Nigeria is a unique country. Lagos State alone has so many people from different states. And all these people were educating for the same market. So the idea is to bring everybody to the table. The education that we offer, how does it transform the life of the learner in such a way that that learner we acquire knowledge, skills, and value? There's no doubt. I've learned a lot. Um, the whole essence is to ensure a better citizenry. And um, I must tell you, if what we have discussed and had here is implemented both by the private and public sector in the next 15 years, definitely Lagos will be a place that will be exporting human resources. Submissions at the two-day Lagos Education Summit is expected to help contribute to the development and growth of the education sector in Lagos at all levels.